Well, hello folks out there in YouTube land. Got a very interesting show for you today. Yep, the Gator fans are sad. They're not happy. Yesterday's game has clearly upset. I totally understand. That game was stressful as could possibly be. Tennessee was looking great on that first drive. We're just flying down the field. Nico looks amazing. He's hitting every pass. And then suddenly he uh, tries to hold on to the ball. He could have gone around the end and run for another 15 yards easy. Fumbles the ball and my battered ball syndrome kicks in. Yep, I'm like, here we go again. Every time we play Florida, we start screwing up. We just love to snatch defeat out of the jaws of victory. It's what we do. But anyway, obviously the game went the way we wanted it to go. And Florida fans, they don't know how to feel. They really don't. They're in a situation where they're stuck with this head coach right now. They have to pay him like $26, $27 million to get rid of him. But he's winning. You know, he won the UCF game. He won the Mississippi State game. And he almost beat Tennessee at Tennessee. And it was the worst case scenario for Florida. They needed one of two things to happen. Their first choice would be to win the game because they want to beat Tennessee. It's their thing. They love doing it because they know it upsets us. The second most popular thing that could have happened was we blow them out, which we could have done, but we just couldn't do it. You know, our offense was just stuck in neutral. Our defense saved our butts. I mean, let's just call it what it is. So they're very torn. This is a worst case scenario for Florida because he comes up here and he plays a top 10 uh, Tennessee at home and ties them and pushes them into overtime and they lose. I mean, it just doesn't get any worse and they're not happy about it. I would have rather been blown out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do right now. I got to be honest with you. I'm I kind of in a just my 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 brain's a little rattled. It, it it hurts me like genuinely to my core. That defense legitimately turned itself around in two weeks. I I put too much into this shit. Let's just let's just call it what it is. I got people yelling at me on Twitter. And one guy kind of just like screaming at me because I, I I called Mont Montreal Johnson trash, which I did two weeks ago in the Mississippi, Mississippi State game. I was not pleased with his performance. My man earned my love today. What I, I'm out of patience. I don't know. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> he burned. Look, he he, he burned. Yeah. He burned. Look, I mean, the bridge was already burned. And I, I mean, like, I, look, we. T the thing is, on Wednesday, I had this conversation. I go, hey, if Billy rattles off, right, and mm -hmm. it kind of got mis misinterpreted because it was simply just like a what if scenario. Not that I was back on the train for Billy, but watching around the league, I'm like, look, I mean. Everybody looks beatable. Like this shit could, we should have won tonight. All right, Kentucky's losing to Vandy. We we, we we beat them. Georgia hasn't looked really dominant at all, at all. That game, all of a sudden, I mean, the way that we looked in the first half. If we win this game, I'm feeling extremely confident over the next two weeks. That's what I'm getting at. And at one point, when these games feel insurmountable. We're no longer that. Um, but I mean, he 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 single handedly lost Blew himself. It. Yeah, single-handedly, single-handedly yeah. buried himself. I, I think, look, I have no clue what's going to happen. I, I legitimately think the fact that Lagway is now guaranteed to be your starter. How hurt is he? How hurt is Vance? Oh, I think he's done. I think it's you think him, so? him. Yeah, 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 for sure. There's Because no when I watch, forget this, in my mind, it's like, hey, throw out the second half. Who cares? This game should have looked exactly like last year's game. It should have been 24-0 at halftime. Yeah, you can see how torn they are. They don't know what to do. They want rid of this coach. But, you know, if he'd run off three or four wins in a row, they'd have had to get on board, which they really don't want to do. And he won't let them. He won't let them get on board, <laughs> and he won't leave. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens next few weeks. they got a really tough schedule in front of them. They do have a game coming up they might could win, which is Kentucky. Kentucky's been giving them a bit of a fit, and it's at the Swamp. So that's a game they could probably win. We'll see. It looks like they're going to be down to DJ Lagway. I don't think Graham, I don't, that was the weirdest injury I've ever seen. He was just backpedaling. And I didn't really see anything other than he just kind of, you know, adjusted his leg a little bit like, oh, you know, I, I tweaked something. It looks like, here's the thing about non-contact injuries. For some reason, they're always really bad. You know, we lost our point guard to that on the basketball court. Nobody touched him. Uh, Hendon Hooker uh, two years ago. Same thing. Nobody touched him. And this thing, this was the weirdest one I've ever seen. He's just literally just going backwards, you know. 
So we'll, I'm sure we'll know more by uh, midweek on him. But uh, they do have DJ Lagway, who looks like he's pretty much ready to go for a freshman, which is surprising. He's going to make a lot of freshman mistakes, but he's very talented. Anyway, uh, this is going to be uh, Locked on Gators, and this guy's fed up. For He's really fed up. Billy Napier has once again proven beyond the shadow of a doubt that he is incompetent at running a proper power four program and getting the Florida Gators where they belong, and he should be fired expeditiously, if not sooner. Fire Billy right now. Leave him in Knoxville. Simple. Leave his ass in Knoxville. It's as simple as that. He should no longer be the head coach of the Florida Gators because guess what? He doesn't deserve it, and he's not capable of doing it. Okay? First off, also, first, fire Billy Napier. Second, if anybody from the administration watches this, if anybody in the UAA watches this, and if any boosters watch this that don't think that Billy Napier should be fired, I want you to come in real close and listen to me. Listen to me while I talk real nice to you. You're an idiot, okay? It is beyond a question now about whether or not Billy Napier is capable of doing this. You look at this game, you watch this game, you watch this game and tell me that this is a guy that should be coaching this program. Yeah, and that guy, he was trying to be fair earlier in the season, but he's had it, you know. And this, you're going to hear this from a lot of Florida Gator fans. They were ready to fire him uh, three weeks ago. You know, they were ready to just – and then he won a couple of games. They're like, oh, crap. And that's really a difficult situation for a, a fan to be in is hoping that you lose. It's a terrible feeling because you know long term this guy can't do it. So it's really a difficult spot to be in as a fan. You always, I mean, it's just terrible. It really is like rooting against your family member. <laughs> you just don't want to do it. But uh, they know they need rid of him. So very difficult. Now, um, here's another uh, YouTuber, uh, Ali Peek, Peek into the Gators, who also is not very happy. Coach Napier is 1-2 and two against Tennessee, 0-2 oh against Kentucky, 0-1 oh against Miami, 0-2 oh against Florida State, 0-2 oh against LSU, 0-2 oh against Georgia, 1-1 one one against Vanderbilt. He is 1-9 against our rivals and 3-11 and on the road. It's not good enough. This university deserves better, and these players, honestly, deserve better. These guys are ready to go, and this is not good enough. I am frustrated, just like you guys are. I totally get it. Let's I didn't even realize it was that bad. That is terrible. One and nine against your <laughs> against your rivals. Yeah, that guy's got to go. But, but they can't fire him. Just It's really going to be tough to fire him right now. What they need to do is wait. They need to wait past the Kentucky game. George is coming. Then they got to play, uh, I believe, Texas. Let me check. Yeah, they got Georgia, Texas, LSU, and Ole Miss, which could be their next head coach. I just know something bad is going to happen. <laughs> huh? ah! I would say they'll fire him after the Texas game. That would be the smartest thing to do because Georgia's probably going to beat you, I would think. I can't imagine they wouldn't. And then Texas is going to whoop the crap out of you. And that'd be the time to fire him. That way, people can be like, well, you gave him every chance. Because here's the thing. It's not like you're going to be able to just go out and just hire somebody right away anyway. The guy you want's coaching for Ole Miss. And anybody else you want's coaching. So, you know, you might as well hold on to him for a few more weeks. That way, nobody can criticize you. And, hey, you know, if they beat Georgia or beat Texas all of a sudden, maybe you will keep him for another year. You know, you got DJ Lagway in there. Uh, we'll see. But... It's very hard to believe that they're going to be able to do anything other than lose to those two teams. They might beat Kentucky. If they lose to Kentucky, you know, go ahead and – I don't know what you do then. That would be – that'd be difficult. I'd probably go ahead and let him uh, get whooped by Georgia and Texas. Then the fan base would thank you for firing him. So, anyway, I'm very torn right now. Look, I'm never going to be upset about winning against Florida. They've had our number for so many years. I mean, it's been awful. It's honestly worse than Tennessee's been with Kentucky. I mean, it really – well, it's probably about the same. And it sucks when you've got a team that's got your number. It really is upsetting. 
Can we just beat this team? I know, I know, I know that Mark Stoops has done a lot of good things. This is his one really bad thing. The stupid stat about beating teams with a winning record and taking the next step and blah, blah, blah. Just freaking beat Tennessee. Please, can we just, can we just stop losing to this stupid team with their stupid orange colors and their stupid song and their woo, woo, get their woo on out of here. Yeah, I can totally understand how Nick Roush feels. <laughs> I can. So we beat them. Josh Heupel's 2-2 two and two against Florida. That's way better than any other coach we've had since Philip Fulmer. So, we'll take the uh, good with the bad. Nico needs to improve. If Nico would have played well, we would have won that game very easily. He missed a couple of guys for touchdowns. If he'd have just made a little better throw, they were wide open. Squirrel White, wide open. Nimrod was wide open. Just missing, missing guys. It's unfortunate. And if Nico would run... If he would run, there's so many times nobody's respecting his ability to run. So hold on to the ball like he did the first time. Just hold on to it. Don't fumble it. And go around the corner, you'd run for 15 yards. It'd be so easy. But I don't know if they trust him to do it now after that fumble. It's very, very unfortunate. But anyway, we did win the ball game. And I can promise you, even though we're not really celebrating because it was such a stressful win, we need to celebrate it some because it is a win over Florida. And realize Florida's in a world of hurt right now. The, the Gator fans don't know what to do. They don't even know to root for their own team right now. Imagine being in a situation, and we can kind of understand this, they don't even know if they need to root for their team or not because they want Billy gone so bad. They're in a, they're in a tough spot. We'll see how it plays out. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of parity in the SEC and in college football now. I think it's solely based on the NIL because a lot of players are moving around and you're seeing a lot more parity you know, you don't have the dominant teams anymore. Um, the only team that's undefeated in the SEC is Texas right now, and that's it. Georgia's been struggling some for them. Alabama's struggling. Tennessee's struggling. All your top teams are having a tough time. Ole Miss has got two losses. So we'll keep an eye on it, but it's been a very interesting uh, season, and I thought you'd enjoy uh, seeing the Florida Gators' reactions to the loss. And if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's we'll continue to cover all these big college sports stories. If you've not subscribed, Boom, boom, boom. Hit this little button right here. It won't cost you a dime. Help you get my videos. Makes it easier. And right over here is a recent video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy based on your viewing history. We'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.